Hi everyone, welcome to GTEC Techno Solution Private Limited. Here we are going to see and discuss about railway planning and design with its interview tips. So the, we got the first question. What are the functions of sleepers? So the primary function of a sleeper is to grip the ray, to gauge and to distribute the railroads to blast with acceptable induced pressure. The side functions of a sleeper include the avoidance of both longitudinal and lateral track movement. Other than that, it also helps to enhance correct line and level of the rights. Let's move to the next question. What does mean by creep and how it is prevented? So creep or concrete keep is defined as the deformation of structure under sustained load. Basically, long term pressure or stress on concrete can make it change shape. So this deformation usually occurs in the direction of force which is being applied like a concrete column getting more compressed or a beam bending. Creep does not necessarily cause concrete to fail or break apart. Creep is factored in when concrete structures are getting to be designed. Let's move on to the next question. What are the functions of rails? The first and foremost functions of rails in terms of a railway track are Rails tends to provide a continuous level surface for the movement of trains with minimum friction with steel wheels of the rolling shock. Rails transmit the axle load to sleepers which transfer the same load to the underlying, underlying blast and formation. And also the rails bear the stresses developed due to heavy vertical loads, braking forces and temperature variance. We'll move to the next question. What are the advantages of concrete sleepers? So the advantages are, it is more durable having greater life up to 50 years. It is economical as compared to wool and steel. It is easy, easy to manufacture. It is not susceptible that is it is not susceptible to vermin attack. It is not susceptible to fire and good for track circuited areas. Let's move on to the next question. What is Kant deficiency? The term Kant deficiency is nothing but defined as the context of travel of railway at constant speed on a constant radius curve. So Kant itself is a British synonym for the super elevation of the curve. That is nothing but the elevation of the outside rail minus the elevation of the inside rail. So this is called as Kant deficiency. Let's talk about the next question. What are the different materials used as blast? So the following are the materials for railway blast used on the railway track. The first one is all about the broken stone. The second one is gravel. The next one is cinders or ashes. The next one is sand followed by conquer followed by murum and then comes the brick blast and the final one as selected earth. So these are the different materials for railway blast used on the railway track. Let's talk about the next question. What is fish plate and why it is used in railways? A fish plate is a metal or wooden plate that is bolted to the sides at the ends of two rails or beams in order to join them. A fish plate does not have anything in common with the aquatic fish. The fish in this term 
is derived from the French word fichi, meaning a pig. Let's move on to the next question. What are the advantages of electric traction? So let's talk about the advantages of electric traction. The first and foremost advantage is lower running core. The first advantage is lower running cost of locomotives and multiple units. The next one is all about the higher power to weight ratio resulting in fewer locomotives, faster acceleration and higher practical limit of power. And the next advantage is less noise pollution that is nothing but quieter operation. And the next one is lower power cost at higher altitudes. And the final one is lack of dependence on crude oil as fuel. Let's move to the next question. What is mean by track circuiting? A track circuit is a simple electrical device used to detect the absence of train on rail tracks, which is used to inform signalers and control relevant signals. Some of the advantages of tracking circuiting are it is very simple to maintain. It is highly reliable for effective and safe running of trains. We got the next question. Define the term heel divergence. Heel divergence is the distance between the running phases of the stock rail and gauge phase of the trunk rail when measured at the heel of the switch. Heel clearance or heel divergence will be having that is in terms of BG that is broad gauge track it will be 13.7 cm to 13.3 cm and in terms of MG that is maple grove track it will be all about 12.1 cm to 11.7 cm and the final one NG that is nothing but the narrow gauge so the narrow gauge track will be 9.8 cm We got the next question. List the two types of switches. The first one is stop switch and the next one is split switch. You can find over here how the split switch and stop switch is there. Let's move to the next question. What is a buffer stop? A buffer stop or bumper is said to be a device used to prevent railway vehicles from going past the end of the physical section of track. The design of the buffer stop is dependent upon the kind of couplings that the railway uses. Since the coupling gear is the first part of the vehicle that the buffer stop touches, it is structurally stronger to track the impact of rolling a vehicle. Let's move to the next question. Define locomotive. A locomotive is a machine which transfers the chemical energy of a fuel into mechanical energy of motion. The fuel used may be water, coal or oil. Nowadays, diesel and electric locomotives are considered to be the more popular because they are very expensive. But the diesel and electric locomotives gives excellent performance compared to others. Let's move on to the next question. Define crosswind component and wind coverage. So if you see about the wind component, V is represented as wind. That is in terms of kilometers per hour is considered to be the velocity of the inclined opposing wind and its component is V sin theta, which is the normal to the central line of the runway length, which is said to be called as the crosswind component. If you see about the wind coverage, the percentage of time in a year during which the crosswind component remains within the limit of 25 km per hour is called as wind coverage of the runway. We got the next question. What does the term clear zone indicate? So the answer is 
The term clear zone is used to indicate the innermost precious portions of the approach zone and it is to be provided at the ends of the runway. We got the next question. Define Windrose Diagram. So diagram showing direction, duration and intensity of wind over a certain period in a specific region is known as Windrose. Its shape resembles a rose. The types of Windrose Diagram are Windrose type 1 and Windrose type 2. Let's move on to the next question. Define airport capacity. So the number of aircraft movements which an airport can produce or handle the specified period of time usually an hour is said to be called as airport capacity. Let's move on to the next question. What is mean by zoning laws? Zoning laws describes the control by authority of the use of land and of the building's theorem. Areas of land are divided by appropriate authorities into zones within which various uses are permitted. So the airports are involved in two types of zoning. The first one is height zoning and the second one is land use zoning. Let's move on to the next question. What are imaginary surfaces? So imaginary surface are approach surface, conical surface, horizontal surface, takeoff climb surface and transitional surface. We got the next question. How the runway numbering is done? The end of each runway is marked with a number which indicates the magnetic azimuth. That is the angle measured in a clockwise direction from the north of the runway in the, la in the direction of landing. We got the next question. What is mean by gate position? The term gate position is used to denote an aircraft parking space adjacent to the terminal building and it is used by a single aircraft for loading and unloading of the passengers, baggage and cargo. Let's move on to the next question. How do you select the site for terminal building? So in order to select the site for terminal building, it should be centrally located with respect to the runway and the site should be easy facility of natural drainage and it should have enough provision for future expansion. So these are the necessary things in order to select the site for terminal building. Let's move to the next question. What are the design aspects of terminal building? So the design aspects of terminal building are airline objectives, airport management objectives, community objectives and passengers objectives. Let's move to the next question. What is hangar and mention its types? The large set erected at the airport for the purpose of housing, servicing and repairing of aircraft is said to be hangar. The types are nose hangar and T hangar. Let's move to the next question. How the positions of lighthouses are decided? Lighthouse is a massive structure normally built of mansory or reinforced concrete. It is a tall tower or high pedestal. In an ideal planning of harbour, the lighthouse should be in an alignment with the central line of the entrance channel. We got the next question. What is the necessity of docks? So if you see about the necessity of docks, docks are enclosed area for breathing of vessels. It is used to facilitate loading and unloading of cargo for repairs, renovations, fueling, oiling, 
painting and watering of vessels. The dogs may be of wet or dry type. Hope you got an idea. Thank you for watching this from GTEC Techno Solution Private Limited.